Hi guys, welcome to another Wing Advanced Day. I am here to finally bring to you my most anticipated March releases. Some of them have been out, uh, but I hope you still give it some time because March is staying true to 2022. So many good books, so little time. Hello peeps, this is a friendly reminder that I'll be recording my video today. I ask you to um, vote whether you wanted a recorded video with my Q&A answers and the review of the book and the giveaway winner or if you want to do a live on either Friday or Saturday and we can do it all live together let me know down below and also please please i need more submissions for questions and if you guys are not interested in me that will be a short video but that's okay uh the giveaway is still going on anyway march starts off with a bang and i'm just gonna jump right into it so i'll um, have stamps are down below i think it worked well like last month for you know each day the horror releases the thriller releases and then everything else that can include fantasy ya non-fiction and maybe science fiction but i don't think there's any this month but that's enough of an intro let's get to march first shall we First, we have Sundial by Catriona Ward. So we have Rob, right? Rob grew, grew up in this house that I imagine is gothic and beautiful because it's called Sundial. Uh, but strange things happen and she gets to a point where she has had enough of her family and leaves everything behind. Then she tries her best to escape her past. She worked so hard and now she's probably a suburban mom with a great life. You know, two and a half kids, three cars and a pick defense house, or whatever she has, but she's happy. Until her daughter is a teenager, Kelly, and then Kelly starts act strangely very eerily similar to the family she left behind. And uh, there's quite a darkness involved in this, okay? So she can see a darkness in Kelly that leaves her so unsettled. She decides to put the poor girl on a car, take her on a field trip to Sundial, her childhood home, knowing that once they get there, there will be a very hard choice she has to make. And then we have Kylie, who's unnerved by the way her mom is behaving. Uh, she notices that her mom is looking at her strange. She goes on this road trip, but she's really, she fears what's gonna happen in Sundial. Her spidey senses are tingling and she has this, you know, inner voice telling her that only one of them is going to come up with Sundial alive. Boom. <laughs> Spoiler alert. I brought the book to work with me. And I plan on vlogging my reading it. I will start at lunchtime today. So stay tuned for that next week. I'm not good at vlog, but I think the only way to get good at something is to continually do it, correct? Sorry guys, I'm tired, so I'll be extra lame today. Next, let's jump into the thrillers. First, we have Tell Me the Truth by Kirsten Maudlin. Um, we have Edith, who's married to a consummate liar, Joe. 
then she finds photos of a woman on his phone suspects he's having an affair decides she just had enough and goes on this rabbit hole deep dive to figure out finally what's going on which leads her to high things of her own from joe and uh, the tagline for this is the truth always comes at a price sometimes that price is your life i love Maud Glenn's book, so I know I'll be reading this very soon. It's super entertaining. Then we have The Night Shift by Alex Finley. So basically, we have New Year's Eve, 1999. It doesn't matter how old you were, if you were alive for it, you probably knew that everybody was expecting a digital apocalypse to happen on the turn of the century because computers hadn't been built like that. It was like a big deal. Apparently people took money out of their accounts and whatever. Then 2000 came and nothing bad happened. Ooh, let's get drunk. Well, <laughs> sorry, let's celebrate. Okay, nothing bad happened to the world, nothing bad happened to you if you were alive or your parents or whatever, but something bad happened and a blockbuster in this little town in New Jersey, four girls were killed, brutally slashed. Young girls that were working the night shift at Blockbuster and one survived, the police had a suspect and the suspect disappeared without a trace. Fast forward 15 years, in the same town, I believe four girls are killed again, this time in an ice cream shop. There is no more blockbuster. Everything is quite similar to the slashings of 1999 and then one surviving victim reveals that the killer told her the same thing that the previous surviving victim uh, was also told by the killer, which is good night, pretty girl. So in this book, we're gonna be following three main points of, of views. We have Ella, the original survivor who is now a counselor or a therapist. We have Chris, who's the brother of the original suspect who went off the rails. And then we have Agent Keller, an FBI agent trying to solve it all. There will be some mixed media as well. And I'm really looking forward to that book. I love the way feeling works. And I hope there's um, some very interesting characters that I'll grow to love. And this time, I hope they don't die, but we'll see. Next, we have Nowhere to Hide by Neil Pettison. Seven friends, one killer, you can run, but you can hide. That's it. Seven friends go on a winter hike. Six of them are hiding secrets. One of them knows them all. Then... One is shot dead, one of them did it, who I'll find out, but I don't know yet. It just has all of the mystery, thrillery tropes I love, isolated, isolated setting, close circle. Yes, please. Then we have The Heights by Louise Kendlish. So The Heights is the name of a, a building that is among the warehouses of said town, Tame. And then you have a flat at the heights and from this you can see this rooftop right it's if you like spying to figure out what's going on no one else can see you can the one day you see a man in there and you're shocked because you thought that man was dead actually no you knew he was dead because you're the one that killed him say no more then we have for the miscellaneous for true crime there is making a psychopath my journey to seven dangerous mind by mark freestone 
Apparently, Mark Freestone is a psychiatrist who has worked as a consultant for many TV shows, including Killing Eve. And in here, he goes over seven of his most intriguing cases and dives deep into the mind of a psycho path. So I'm looking forward to reading that. We have for YA, I think this is a YA thriller or hybrid. It's called A Night to Die For by Lisa Schroeder. In it, we have Mario, okay? He's this loner. He plays video games throughout most of his high school. He has one close friend, Lucas, but then prom is coming. He decides he's not gonna go. You know, being a normal teenager is not only cars for him, but then his mom's boss's daughter, Ilana, uh, doesn't have a prom date, so her mom wants to run favors with her boss, kind of puts him in an awkward situation. He goes like, whatever, I'll take her to prom. And he, he gets quite excited because it's his only chance to actually do one normal thing before his high school experience is over. So he goes in, surprisingly, um, he's crowned prom king with the most popular girl in school being prom queen, Maribel. And that's when things kind of go awry. As he is crowned, a la carry from his crown, thousands and thousands of worms fall all over his head and he's deeply humiliated. He leaves right away. Ilana goes with him. As he's driving her home, he thinks he sees something at the corner of his eyes on the road, but he doesn't think much of it. And later he finds out that something was actually Mirabel left for dead and he becomes the prime suspect. Then we have Gallant by V.E. Schwab. She is, in Gallant we follow Olivia. She grew up in Gallant, this beautiful old manor who now is home to her cousin. She receives a letter inviting her in. She shows up. When she gets there, nobody knew she was coming. Awkward. She stays anyway. Matthew's pretty rude about it, but she's determined to stay, even though he's making it really uncomfortable for her. And she keeps seeing calf-formed ghouls all around the house. And then, she feels that there's something about Galan that she wants to get to the bottom of and she doesn't really know what it is. So she goes on this blind errand and then she finds this weird wall. She walks through the wall and she steps almost into this parallel universe. It's a house exactly like a lunch, but the half deformed ghouls are now fully formed. The whole place is almost like in ruins. And there's this very dark, mean figure that rules all the beings in there. So it seems like it'll be like a great gothic fantasy. I don't know. I'm really looking forward to it. And if you saw my Unhaul from Friday, the cover is stunning. On March 3rd, we have a thriller anthology, The Perfect Crime, Around the World and 22 Murders. So there are 22 authors from different places of the world writing a mystery, a mystery or a thriller short story. It is an own voice book. It brings diversity and different cultures united by something you know we all love which is hmm, solving murders on 
March 8th, we have For Horror, Face the Night by Ellen Lestovka. But I don't know how to say that. Sorry, Ellen. So we follow Adriana. She's this rookie sketch artist who lives in a town. She grew up in her relationship with her dad, the mayor. <coughs> is very strange to the point that her dad wants to take away her son. One day she is assisting the police with um, a sketch and she draws this very mangled, horrific face instead of the suspect. And then she realizes this is the same face that haunts her nightmare. People around her don't give her an easy time at work so that brings stress. Her dad's trying to steal her son brings her stress. The more stress she gets, the more she draws this face. And then it escalates. She starts seeing the face in the crowd everywhere she goes when she is awake. It's not just her nightmares anymore. And she knows this is connected to her hometown's lake and the hometown itself. She doesn't have a lot of allies or friends, but she will try her hardest with as much or little help she can to figure out what is coming because she can't take it anymore. Next, we have The Golden Couple by Gear Hendricks and Sarah Pekkanen. I went into this book blind and I think is the best way to go, but we follow Avery. She used to be a former therapist who de developed her own 10 session technique, let's call it, the thread in the line of ethics. So now she is still counseling, but she doesn't call herself a therapist anymore because she's not licensed, but she really helps people. Then we have Matthew and Marisa come to her with relationship problems. She takes their keys. They are hiding things from each other and she's just, uh, and she is determined to help them in these 10 sessions, only their lives getting tangled and not for the best. Next, we have The Summer We Forgot by Caroline George. So we have Darby and Morgan used to be, be best friends. And two years prior to where the book starts, uh, their relationship became strained. Very strange to the point they don't talk anymore and everything happened after both of them were a camp counselor. Apparently what happened, happened at camp, nobody remembers, okay? Or so they say. So now here's the deal. Two years, we back at the present one of the foreman science teachers is found dead at the marsh. And they have to join forces because they want to figure out what's going on before someone else dies. They're pretty sure there's a killer around. Next, I have a YA fantasy that I feel a lot of people will enjoy. Lake Lore by Anna, M Anna Marie McLemore. And the tagline is, two non-binary teens are pulled into a magical world under the lake. So they live in this town in which every resident knows about the local lake lore, which is that underneath the lake, there's a half air, half water world. Everybody knows his stories of legends, except for Bastion and Lore. They know the stories are through, true. They know it because Bastion has lived as much in their world as on the surface. And Lore has visited the world once. And that was a visit that changed both of their fates forever. And then the lines between the water and the air seems to become blur and it's like the world is falling apart. Bastion and Lore know that they have to preserve the world and would do everything in their power to stop that change from happening. Also because if that comes, that world comes to surface, 
so will their secrets right here's the thing though they haven't talked in like seven years they don't trust each other anymore and in order to keep the world underneath the lake they will have to work together it just sounds it'll be a very interesting story <clears throat> I personally haven't heard anything about such world. I love that there is queer representation. So I'm looking forward to reading this book. On March 10th, we have The Influencers by S.V. Leonard. And I read her previous book that it was inspired by Love Island. So I absolutely love the lighthearted witty way that she brings you know elements of pop culture and turn them like into mysteries with soapy characters and in this book we're going to be diving into the worlds or the behind the scenes of influencers so we follow maggie she has a true crime blog and she's decided that she wants to be a full-time influencer she just needs a big break when she's invited as a guest to the Influencer of the Year Awards, she jumps on it, she thinks she's gonna network, and this is, boom, give her a fighting chance. Only this takes place on a ship or a cruise. And what's her name? Stella, who's like the most popular influencer with millions of followers, the one that everybody wants to be as big as is killed. Is Maggie said no, cause that girl has as many enemies as she has followers. And Maggie goes, ooh, ooh, now I can investigate this crime, assist the police and skyrocket my blog. Yeah, she goes there. So we'll see. We will see if Maggie is going to get her break break. And um, I hope there is a lot of, you know, people out to get Stella to make it more interesting. But I know it's going to be a fun read. On March 15th, for horror, I have The Raven is Dead by Darcy Coates. It is a Gravekeeper, the second book in the Gravekeeper series. And I'll keep it spoiler free. I don't like talking a lot about sequels because it might spoil someone from the original. But we follow Kira. She's still uh, living in the little town she got to in the first book. She is a grave. She is a groundskeeper for the graveyard. She's helping spirits until she accidentally answers a call of a ravenous spirit of a serial killer. And now she is have to find a way not to become his next victim. Post mortem. I think it'll be really fun. For thrillers, we have Nine Lives by Peter Swanson. Yes, yes, I know. We'll see. He has a chance, right? He needs to not be a sexist problematic person on this book so but what am i saying i know i'm gonna like it and this one sounds right up my alley this is the story of nine strangers who receive a cryptic list with their names on it and then begin to die in highly unusual circumstances so nine random people receive a letter with a list nothing more and their name is included in it they think is like a joke a telemarker not telemarketer, like a, a spam or a, a, a plot or whatever. Everybody bends that. Especially because they don't really know the other people on the list. Like there is no connection there at all. And then someone from the list dies. And I'm assuming someone else dies because we need a pattern here. And they all go like, oh shit, who else was on the list? We gotta figure out what's going on because I could be next. Luckily enough, there is an FBI agent who was one of them and she is determined to make sure um she discovers who's behind us and stops them before anyone else die or at least before she dies right 
Next, we have the Book of Cold Cases by Simone St. James. We have Shay. In it, we follow Shay. She is a reception by day, true crime blogger at night. Her passion for true crime and cold cases is very personal as she is a kidnap survivor. She escaped a kidnapper. Then around this town, we have Beth. Beth is a very rich woman who lives at Greer House, this mansion. But when she was 23, which was 40 years prior, she was accused of killing two men. She was never convicted, but as a result of that, she became this hermit. She lives in her house, barely goes out into the world. One day, by chance, Shay meets Beth, and you know, the true crime blogger in her asks for an interview. To her surprise, Beth agrees. And then, even though, and then the interview takes place at Greer House. She doesn't feel very comfortable, but she's so compelled by this woman's story. Even though at her house, she's always so uneasy, but she keeps visiting and visiting, which makes she left to wonder if she's making friends with a manipulative murderer. And that's where her uneasiness come from, or is there something lurking around Greer, Greer House? Next, we have her, we have her. <laughs> Next, we have Under Lock and Skeleton Key by Gigi Pandian. And here's the tagline, it's all I needed to know. An impossible crime, a family legacy, the intrigue of hidden rooms and secret staircases. We have Tempest. Uh, she works in the entertainment industry. Something quite tragic or happened she has to take a step back from her career she moves back home her family owns secret staircase construction which is a construction company that specializes in making homes fun they build hidden staircases hidden rooms intricate logs you name it uh, Tempest never really wanted to work into, to get into the family trade. But then one day she's visiting one of her father's current assignments. I don't know what you call them. Project. And then he's showing the hidden room he's building inside she sees a body not only a body but the body of her stunt double which makes her believe that maybe she was the intended victim after all and lo and behold she is investigating it i'm i'm looking forward to it i think it will be quite a fun light read next we have the finalist by joan long so we have this best-selling thriller author. Everybody loves. Like instant, you know, New York Times best-selling book every time he does. But here's the thing. He's working on his latest novel and he dies before he finishes. What is a publisher to do? Make a contest, of course. So they decide to make a contest and offer five struggling writers the chance to win $1 million and the rights to continue the series. This is thing, this is the big rig everybody wants. They are dropped into an isolated item and given seven days to draft the end. Or the, and then they will read the end, the one they feel is the best is the winner. That sounds like pretty easy. So I get to spend seven days on an island writing a book and possibly walk out of here a millionaire with a contract? Hell yes. Yeah, but you all know what happens in Isolated Island. Soon one of them will show up dead. And they might not be the last. I'm so lucky. I have high hopes 
for this book and i hope it's great and if it is i'll i'll try to hype it up on march 22nd i don't have any horror just thrillers the girl beyond the gate by becca day so we follow jody like everybody's looking for fresh starting thrillers but yeah so you know jody is looking for a fresh start she moves into this gated community in it she she goes into it decided not to make any friends and just isolate herself she she just wants nothing to do with the rest of the world and socializing but against her best advice her gut she makes friends with the neighbors uh nora who she doesn't really like but especially her terminally ill daughter lacy then a murder happens that shocks the entire gated community and jody thinks that she has this duty to save lacy from her mom but then secrets from nora's past start to emerge and as these secrets come to life she realizes how similar nora and herself are and they're both trying to hide something pretty big and neither of them are innocent so i think this will be a good mystery <clears throat> next we love the line club by annie ward the tagline says a tangled web of lies draws together three women in this explosive thriller of revenge murder and shocking secrets we follow natalie she is the office assistant at this private school and dreams of having the lives of the parents we have brooke she's a super involved mom and a serial cheater and asha she is the ultimate helicopter mom who's really convinced that her husband is having an affair and then there's nicholas he's the assistant athletic director whatever that means if you know comment down below because i have no idea like a pe teacher i'm assuming natalie loves him brooke wants him ash needs him and then one day two bodies are carried out from the school and of course after that tensions run high this is a very affluent town where people will stop at nothing to get what they want. Finally, we get to March 29th. For horror, we have The Resting Place by Camilla Stan. We follow Eleanor, who suffers from prosopagnosia, face blindness. She came face to face with her mother's killer, but obviously she cannot identify him. The fact that she knows there's someone out there that knows who she is and knows that she knows she witnessed their crime but can't remember their face is a large. Of course, that person might just err on the side of caution and, you know, off her too. And she is worried her relationship with her grandmother was kind of strained so she's very surprised when she's left a house in the middle of the swedish woods she knows the house is a place of many secrets and she doesn't want to go alone so she brings the lawyer her aunt and boyfriend to help her find those answers that was a decision but if that was the right decision we're gonna have to read the book and find out I love me isolated woods, close circle, and old manner. So I'm really looking forward to this one. And I really want to see how the face blindness is going to play in this book. Next, we have Four Aunties in a Wedding by Jesse Q. Sutanto. Maddie from the previous book is getting married. And she really wants her family to enjoy this so she wants them to attend the wedding as guests of course their aunties and mom think that nobody else 
can be as good as them for Maddie as they are wedding vendors. And they compromise. They accept being only guests, but they uh, want a specific, you know, Chinese Indonesian family, much like their own, to be the wedding vendors and planners. Maddie says, okay. And at first glance, they seem to have a lot in common, including Stephanie, who is the photographer for that family-run company. And Stephanie reminds Maddie a lot of herself. But here's the thing though, one day Maddie kind of overhears Stephanie talk on the phone with someone about taking out a target and she's convinced they're using this wedding as a front for a mafia business. She tells her aunties and her mom, and of course they are determined to make sure that Maddie's wedding is not ruined. So that would be so fun. I really usually don't like romance, but the way Satanto writes is, Oh, amazing, and I love those women. I wish they were my aunties, but I'm really, really excited for this. I know that if I'm having a bad day, this will bring a smile to my face. Next, we have The Long Weekend by Gilly or Jilly McMillan. Three couples, two buddies, one secret. Jane, Ruth, Emily, and Eddie are really close friends and so are their husbands. So every year they vacation together. This year, they, they, they are planning a vacation, but Eddie's husband suddenly dies and she decides to skip it. So Jane books a reservation at Darkfell Barn, a perfect isolated retreat. And the three of them go ahead of their husbands. They decide to get there the night before just so they can have like a girl's night and catch up. Everything goes fine until they get to Darkfell Barn and they put a note saying that one of their husbands is going to be murdered. But this is an isolated place with no, no phones and no cell service. Pepe. Yes. So we're gonna have friend drama, secrets I'm assuming, a lot of tension. Sign me up. Next, we have Dead Two Grays by Gretchen McNeil. It's a YA book who seems to be a modern take on Strangers on a Train. Neve is a 17-year-old film noir freak, and she really feels like she doesn't fit anywhere. And she only has one friend who's her best friend and everything, Yasmin. But Yasmin betrays her. Her life is shattered, so that summer she decides to go to this girl empowerment camp. And there she meets Diane, who's this magnetic girl Neve just gra gravitate towards. And one thing leads to another, and before Neve knows anything, she makes a pact with Diane that Diane is gonna murder he has many in exchange for Neve killing her stepbrother. Okay, Neve laughs it off. It's a joke. Of course is a joke, right? But it's one of those things that you fantasize about and then you instantly feel better. Only Yasmin turns up dead. And Diane knocks on Neve's door to collect her side of the bargain. Diane was not joking. Neve doesn't really know <clears throat> what to do. She doesn't want to kill anyone. She doesn't even know this boy. So to buy some time, she tells Diane, okay, okay, but I'll, I'll infiltrate his life first, okay? Let me get to know him and I'll do it, I'll do it. But the thing is, she ends up falling in love with this boy and she doesn't really believe that he is as bad as Diane make him out to be. And the more she knows him, she figures out that there's a very dark side to Diane. Yasmin was not her first victim and probably will not be her last. And it kind of falls on Eve's shoulders to stop her once and for all. It seems like it'll be a very, very interesting take on it. I have high hopes. I like 
Gretchen McNeil. And this is a trope uh, that I really enjoy. I've never seen it in a YA. I want to know how it plays out. So I'm super excited for this too. And I said ish when I said the 29th because I have one more book that I'm looking forward to in March, but I couldn't find a release date, not for North America or the UK. But I know as soon as it's available to me, I want to read it. The name of the book is Slash Her. So Slash Her, A Women of Horror Anthology. And I'm really, really excited for it because I love women writers. I love anthologies. I love horror short stories. And this one has 21 short own voice stories written by 21 different writers from all over the world with one thing in common slushers yes yes and the tagline these stories are strong they are bloody and they pack a punch are you ready i am well, these are my anticipated March releases. Thank you so much for being here with me. I'll see you on Friday. And until then, be the hummingbird. Bye.